Baruch here with GenConnect.com chatting with Heather Smith. How are you, Heather? I'm doing great. So let's look back for a second. Last year, did we rock the vote? Uh, we did rock the vote, and last year was so sweet. And I'll tell you why. You know, in 2008, it was the year of the youth vote, and everyone expected young people to come out. But then when we went into 2012, everyone was saying there's an enthusiasm gap. And I kept saying, no, 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 if you go out into the streets, if you talk to young people, you'll know they still care passionately about these issues. They're doing whatever they can to make a difference, and they'll show up again. And they were ignored, they were talked down about, and on Election Day 2012, they came out again in record numbers, and they truly, in my opinion, rocked the vote again. But did you have to appeal to them in a different way than you did in 2008? We did. You know, in 2008, you sh they showed up, they voted, and they thought somehow, you know, rainbows and unicorns in the world <laughs> would change. Right. They were much more dis gruntled, uh, a lot more distrust of our government to actually solve problems, um, very turned off by the and partisan bickering, as are all Americans, but in particular these young people, because they came out and thought it would be different. Um, so we had to go back and really help them understand that it's not just about showing up, but it's about showing up and then using that power, staying engaged and making sure that you know you continue to use your voice but you will have no voice if you don't show up and vote if you don't exercise your right and actually elect people who are accountable to you and that really resonated we said you know we can't let them you know ignore us we will show up again and and at the end of the day rock the vote registered over a million new young voters wow. we had tens of thousands of volunteers around the country in every state and the turnout rivaled that of 2008. Let's fast forward to 2016. I know we're <laughs> far out, but people are already making predictions. Yeah. What are you predicting in terms of the turnout? You know, what's incredible about the youth vote is that it changes, right? Every single day there's 12,000 new voters turning 18 years old. So the electorate in 2016 will be a whole new set of young people right. uh, who will get the chance to vote for the very first time. So to prepare for that, we've actually launched civics programs in high schools. So as they turn 18 every day, we're in their classrooms, talking to them about the power they have as voters, getting them registered. We've started early, so by the time we get to elections, we'll have a much bigger electorate to work with. This generation is, you know, different than their older brothers and sisters. So we'll do a lot more with mobile phones, for example. Um, we'll talk about issues in a slightly different way. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, young people today are still just as engaged and in fact the problems they face are, are a little bit more serious, you know, with the student loan issues, with um, that, well, that's a front of mine today as the rates might double on Monday. Um, unemployment rates still way higher for young people than they are the rest of the population. So they care, we'll get them registered. We've started already uh, and we look forward to 2016. How about in between those big presidential elections, mm -hmm. how should young people be engaged? Yeah, it's a great question and there's lots of ways, but I'll give you two. The first is everyone who voted in 2012, we're gonna make sure they vote again for their next election, whether that's a mayor's race, a city council race, a representative race, so 2013, 2014, there are elections all the time. So we're reaching back out to those voters saying, hey, you did it once, let's do it again, let's do it at the local level. You get someone voting two times, they'll be a voter for life. So we're keeping them engaged and helping them understand that process. But then second, just like we talked about earlier, if you turn out and vote, and we voted in such huge numbers, you have this power, but it is nothing if you don't use it. So we're informing them about when big decisions are being made on the issues that they care about, from immigration to student loans to voting rights issues to healthcare issues, and, and just giving them the opportunity to take action on those issues, whatever that action might be, whatever their opinion might be, but we're giving them the opportunity to actually leverage their voice in the decision-making process now. You are doing great work, Heather. Well, thank thank you, you so much. It's so fun to be here. And for more with Heather Smith, be sure to check out GenConnect.com.